happy, so proud of his museum. That really was just kind of a gong show of different things happening. And Ravi, the man's name, the lecturer, looks at him and just asks the curator, what is your foundation level? <laughs> That's postmodernism. That's the problem with postmodernism. Nothing is built in this world without ideology. Nothing. I think that that has to be amplified right now in that children are definitely being taught an ideology in school. And I understand that you cannot have 100% neutral ideology, but you can have better ideologies than other ideologies. We would agree that fascism, communism are not good ideologies. So we want to create an environment in schools that is not your truth. Because it leads to the problem of if you believe one thing and you believe another thing and those are conflicting things, that's where we are in society now. It's like herding cats. We're just all trying to do something different and the kids are, are taking effect of that. So that's where I'm coming from with postmodernism as being, it's, it's implied in the current education system that you can just define what you believe to be true. And I think you can probably see where we're going with gender ideology in that in terms of the female male relationship. So we arrive at SOGI 123. This is the scale of it. This is something that everyone should know. It is in every school district in BC, every single one. In Alberta, it is slowly creeping in. You'll see six divisions in Alberta are now signed up. The funding available has increased dramatically. The federal government is a part of that, and the ARC Foundation is a part of that. Um, we're going to get into the ARC Foundation here in a second, but basically it's a private, non-taxable corporation here in Canada that's, that's funding all of this. They're going to adapt, pilot, and evaluate tools and models to expand the capacity of K-12. That means kindergarten, where it starts, and we have examples of that. I'm going to help Jen to target that when she's talking about the books in school where they're pushing gender ideology, the belief that males can be females and females can be males. Now, where do I stand on that? I hope that I can safely say that every human has an XX or an XY chromosome. At the basic level of biology, there are differences in gender, so meaning your expression of who you are as male or female, so you can be a more feminine male or you can be a more masculine female. I agree with that. You cannot tell me that a man can give birth to a baby. So just so you understand, and that's where I'm coming from. And there's bone structure differences. The pelvis of a woman is a completely different angle. Uh, it's 120 degrees versus a 90 degree angle on a male in the pelvis. There's bone structure, blood content, um, bone density, obviously physical reproduction capabilities and organs. These are all differences between male and female that are based in biology that cannot be altered. Um, they can be altered, but not uh, ultimately changed at the chromosomal DNA level. It's in every cell of your body, whether or not you are a female or a male. But in current understanding, this is where we're going with education, is that we're, we're driving on towards a world where children are taught from a very young age, kindergarten, that they can be whatever they choose to be in terms of their biological sex. So ARC, this is the group that's funding SOGI123, largely in BC, but definitely across Canada. Allied Rainbows Community International. Tax exempt, um, to put a little bit of what the executive director the Arcus Foundation um, is somehow linked. I need to flush this out more. There's been a really good website I've been relying on called genderdescent.com. That's really helped me, but this is a link that I'm trying to find still. The Arcus Foundation <coughs> is providing money to the Arc Foundation. So Arcus versus Arc. This is an American company. And it's a medical device company. The reason that I bring that up is because if you were to look at the Arcus Founded Founding Foundation's activity, they're dumping hundreds of millions of dollars into different types of research. There is currently, right now, 50% of their charitable giving is going to the Great Apes Project, which is 
analyzing and diagnosing.